You and I both know that it is crucial to run financial statements. Not only does it provide you helpful insight into how much money your business is making on a month to month basis, but it is also going to be telling you how, what your run rate is as far as your expenses are concerned. Are you overspending on a month to month basis? And all of this information combined is going to tell you exactly what your net profit margins are. My name is Adrena. I am the owner and accountant here at Accounting by Adrena. I am a QuickBooks certified pro advisor and I'm here to be your expert bookkeeper. I am also going to be providing some general business advice and this is just my opinion. I like to think of running financial statements as telling the story of your business. Running financial statements on a year over year basis is also going to tell you the story of how your business is doing from last year to this year. It's also going to provide you crucial information as far as making business decisions moving forward, maybe in the next month, three months, six months, a year. So all of this information is so very crucial for the small business, for the entrepreneur. And there are too many times when I ask a company when I ask a small business let me see your financial statements and they don't have it they actually don't know how to run financial statements in this video tutorial I am going to show you exactly how to run financial statements out of QuickBooks online now this is just going to be a general overview of running financial statements in QuickBooks online as the test drive version doesn't have specific versions for essentials and advanced so we're just going to use a general version and this is going to apply to um, the online version of QuickBooks. Now, there are gonna be some variations within the different versions of QuickBooks, and I'm not, not gonna get into that. I'm just gonna look at basic profit and loss and balance sheets. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them down in the comments. Give this video a thumbs up and make sure to share this video with your fellow entrepreneur friends. All right, friends, on my screen, you will see a uh, QuickBooks link here. Now, I will provide this link to you in the description box below, but this is basically how to get to the QuickBooks test drive link. This is also where you can find the trial links in case you wanted to give QuickBooks a try if you have not signed up with QuickBooks yet. So I'm gonna use this a link here that says QuickBooks Online Test Drive, and I've already clicked on it. Sometimes it's going to ask you for a security verification, so you just need to click on I'm not a robot and then continue. Now this, pop, this popped up immediately, and so what I want to draw your attention to is the fact that QuickBooks is actually um, updating their software on a monthly basis, and so sometimes little pop-ups like this will will happen so you can just go ahead and close out of that or if you wanted to look into that a little bit more you could do that but all it's saying is you know it's moved the sign out so there's just a couple more um, features up here that I'm not going to go into today but we can go into on a later video so for this particular version, now this is gonna be different from the self-employed version, and if you are interested in learning more about the self-employed version, I do have a QuickBooks Online self-employed uh, version video that I'll link to in the description box below as well. We just wanna make sure that for this particular video, you have already cleared your checking and your savings um, transactions in your bank feed, so you've, like, Theoretically, you've already gone through this, you've already cleared out, this would be zero. So since I'm just using an online test drive version, it's not gonna be zero. So we're gonna use a different reporting period just because of that. So the reports that I wanna draw your attention to is gonna be over here on the left-hand navigation bar. You can go ahead and click on reports. You can actually click this hamburger button here to um, maximize your screen space. And this is what it's gonna look like, generally speaking. If you have a different version of uh, QuickBooks Online, it may look just a little bit different, and that's gonna be okay because we're just gonna look at two reports. We're gonna look at the profit and loss statement as well as the balance sheet. And those are pretty much provided for you on every version of QuickBooks except for the self-employed. So. The first report that I want to draw your attention to is just kind of like these short reports here. This is kind of like on your favorites screen. So again, you can just close out of those um, pop-ups that come up. Now, if you were looking to look at, you know, a consolidated perspective of your profit and loss, so this would include, you know, January through today's date, 
um, essentially, and it would just be um, kind of like summed up as far as your accounts are concerned. But if you have not cleared your bank feed, now that's when you kind of go over here and you go to banking and you still have transactions that are outstanding. So let's say you've only cleared your bank feed and you've reconciled your bank accounts through last month. So we're gonna go ahead and select July 31st. And then you can go ahead and click run report. Now this is on the accounting method accrual. And so this is gonna get a little bit more um, in depth, but here's what I would say to this. So as far as the accounting method is concerned, I just want you to take a look at your latest tax filing. So the PDF that your accountant or your CPA person had provided to you when they filed your taxes, there is going to be a small section that says accounting method. It's going to either say cash or accrual. So that's the way you would um, run the report. So if you were to select cash, it's not going to um, show you the income side that has been billed. It's just going to show you what you have received as far as income is concerned in cash. Okay. So that's kind of like a little bit of the difference. If I selected accrual, it's going to show me everything that I've billed out through um, these dates. So that's just kind of like, um, we can actually get into a little bit more detail as far as the reporting features, but I just wanna give you kind of like a general overview. So this is a consolidated perspective of the profit and loss report for your business. Okay, so if we scroll down, QuickBooks actually does, um, I'm gonna close this. QuickBooks has their own way of um, categorizing uh, financial statements. Now, generally speaking, financial statements have similar income, expense, uh, categorizations, but the way QuickBooks does it sometimes is just going to be slightly different. So you just want to make sure that you're taking a look at um, the important things here. So these are actually going to be subcategories of this category here, and then this is part of this. Okay, so that's kind of like how that is, how you read that. For the purposes of what I'm trying to explain here, I just wanna look at the net income. This net income number is going to tell me, am I spending more than what I am bringing in in income? And since this is a positive number, we're doing good. I'm giving you two thumbs up here. So if it was a negative number, then we would have to dig a little bit deeper as far as how you are spending your money or as far as how you are billing your clients. So it could be a problem of both. It could be a result of maybe just uh, the nature of your business. Maybe it's cyclical or maybe it's seasonal. Um, so those are some of the things that we want to take into consideration. Now, the most important report that I feel would be most beneficial for you is going to be something called the profit and loss by month. So here is really where you can get into like trend analysis. So I'm gonna do the same uh, date range here. Okay. And so it's gonna give me uh, the same categories, but it's going to show me how I've spent or what income has come in by month. Now this is really where you can tell how you are doing month to month. So. For this particular example, it looks like income was down in the first two months of the year. And then it started gaining some ground, right? And then all of a sudden in June, there was a spike in income. That's incredible. <laughs> okay, so uh, so here's the deal. You know, like maybe this, maybe they started their business in March. And so there was just very little happening in um, in the month of March. Now we can come here to total income. This is the total income category, which is basically a sum of kind of like these broader categories. Um, and so you can see kind of like the pattern of what's happening. So each month it keeps growing, which is awesome. Um, ideally speaking, that is kind of what you want. Uh, you really don't wanna have kind of large fluctuations going the other way. Um, going down. Okay, so let's just talk about the pandemic for a minute because it has affected us drastically, right? I mean, small business owners, I know, I feel you. I, I feel this so deeply. Okay, so here's what I'm going to say to that. 
Now, the months of, I think it would be starting in April, you're probably going to see a sharp decline in April, May, June, and July until your state opens up. And that's going to be okay. So I'm going to go into kind of looking at your financial statements from last year too, but stick with me on this one. Let's just kind of like go through it um, from this point here. Okay, so when you come down to the expense side, so it's going to come right after the gross profit here. Oh, uh, sorry, let me go back to the cost of goods sold. So this is the cost of goods sold category. Uh, this is going to reduce the total income. This is like whatever you spent as far as kind of like um, pieces of, you know, whatever, let, this guy has pest control. So maybe he had to buy some supplies for these particular services. So this is gonna reduce that total amount and give you a gross profit number. Um, okay, so we're going down into the expense categories now. And what I'm trying to do is identify any patterns. And so far, I don't see a, a lot of patterns. But what I do see is an uptick in expenses month over month. So, I mean, if we just take a look at this here, $300 in March, which makes sense, you know, new business. And then $0 spent in April. So I would question that. Maybe there was a bill that came through and didn't get paid to May or something like that. So then you can see kind of like the increase in in spending uh, month over month. And then what I'm going to look at next is this net income line here. So obviously we assumed that he started his business in March. And so he shows a net income, which is a good thing. I'm giving you two thumbs up here. $91, $365. So here is where I can see something changed, right? Okay, now this looks out of the ordinary. So I would drill down into that. So what I'm giving you is kind of like my perspective of taking a look and analyzing the financial statements. So you look for patterns, you look for trends, you look for month over month um, assessments, and this is really gonna tell you the story of your business. How is your business doing in the first seven months of the year? And by the end of it all, when it's cumulative, you do have a net income profit here. So there is 1,676 as, as far as profit is concerned, which is awesome. Now the next report we're going to go over is the balance sheet. So the balance sheet is really just gonna tell you all the background information of your business. It's usually as of a specific date. So um, this is saying this year to date through Let's go back to July 31st. Let's just make the assumption that the, your book, your books are closed through July. So as of July 31st, this is how much money you have in your checking account. This is how much money you have in your savings account. And this is your total cash. Now in accounts receivable, this is actually going to tell you um, what you have outstanding. So this is telling me that you build $5,281, but you have yet to receive that in cash. So you are owed this much money, whoops. So the next point is the inventory assets. So inventory asset is um, going to tell you how much um, kind of like supplies that you have on hand that are going to go towards your business, towards you know whatever craft that you are doing. Um, and this is a whole other ball of wax conversation, undeposited funds. Basically what I can tell here is there is something outstanding when it comes to what is entered in QuickBooks and then what has been cleared through your bank feed. So if I was the accountant or if I was the business owner, I would look into this number a little bit more and try to make that go to zero. Your goal is to have zero dollars here. So it's also going to show you any kind of like fixed assets. So the total cost of your truck is going to show up here. Your CPA or your accountant is going to tell you how much to depreciate year over year. So I would rely on them for that number um, and make sure you do the journal entries for that once they give that to you. Okay, so that is the top part. This is the assets part of your balance sheet. Now the balance sheet, the idea is that 
everything would balance. So your assets would equal your liabilities. And if we take a look here, your assets are 23,436.29 and your total liabilities equity 23,436.29. So that does balance. Now in this section here, liabilities and equities, in the accounts payable line, this is gonna show you what you have entered as far as invoices are concerned. So these are bills that are coming to you and you have yet to pay it. So you owe people the total amount of 1602.67. Uh, this is gonna show you how much you owe on your MasterCard or whatever credit card that you have. Um, so that means that the expenses have been entered through the bank feed and you have yet to pay off that credit card. So it's just going to show you what the balance is. Okay, balance sheet. I don't know if you've got that yet. <laughs> checking the balance of your checking account, the balance of your savings account, the balance of your accounts receivable. Okay, I hope you're noticing a pattern. <laughs> okay, so then next are gonna be other current liabilities. Now, I'll just make one small note when it talks about other current liabilities versus long-term liabilities. The difference is current liabilities are going to be um, used up within the current fiscal year. So if you're on a calendar year basis, it's gonna be the calendar. If you're on a fiscal year basis, like July through June or something like that, it's going to be during that fiscal year. Long-term liabilities are going to be um, longer than one year. So it looks like there's a couple of things here. So uh, the Board of Equalization, so that's like sales tax, loan payable. Okay, so this person took out a loan and it's um, they're planning on paying it back within a year. This person also took out a notes payable and they plan to probably pay it off over time. So opening balance equity, your accountant or your CPA is basically going to tell you to journal entry that out to retained earnings. So I'm just gonna give you that up front. Um, and then your net income. So the net income, I hope this sounds familiar to you because we already talked about it when we looked at the profit and loss statement. So this number, 1676.46 should equal what was on your net income for your profit and loss statement. And if you recall, it does match. So that's good. Thumbs up all around. And then there's your total liabilities and equities that equal your total assets. Now, a couple other notes to make about the report feature is you can download this um, you can export it to Excel, you can export it to PDF, you can also email it to yourself, you'd have to set up email that way. Um, you can print it. Uh, there's all sorts of options to get it out of QuickBooks and into Excel. So that's pretty much um, the overview of the reporting feature for QuickBooks Online. Now do let me know if you have any questions on this video. Remember to give this video a thumbs up and share it with your entrepreneur friends, your small business friends, so that they know how to run their financial statements out of QuickBooks Online. Now, if you have yet to commit to an online software for your bookkeeping like QuickBooks Online or even QuickBooks Self-Employed, I wanted to let you guys know I do have a mini course available to you. It is called Bookkeeping for the Entrepreneur and I will link it down below. Now, Bookkeeping for the Entrepreneur will actually teach you the next steps that you need to take in order to organize your business financials. This mini course will help you manage your business financials and your bookkeeping. We also cover how to stay on top of those pesky quarterly estimated tax payments because we all know we have to make those payments, right? Now, if you head to the link below, you will see the course curriculum, which will probably take you about an hour or so to complete. But the amount of information that I provide to you within this mini course is substantial. In fact, in this mini course, I am actually sharing with you the spreadsheet that I use personally in my business to manage my cash flow and to see kind of like on a forecast basis what the next six months is going to look like, what the next 12 months is going to look like as far as my business financials are concerned. So head over to the link below and it's called Bookkeeping for the Entrepreneur. And I am looking forward to seeing you guys within my mini course.